Welcome to the Truman Charities Podcast, a community of caring. I am Jamie Truman, your host. I'm one of the co-founders of Truman Charities. Our organization has raised over $1 million for several different charities as we share our message of helping others and paying it forward. We plan to continue to educate our audience on the culture of giving. On this podcast, I will interview fellow charity founders, volunteers, sponsors, and other people in the community who will share their stories. You will hear and be inspired by their selflessness and passion for helping others. Welcome to another episode of A Community of Caring. Don't forget to rate and review this podcast for your chance to win a $50 Amazon gift card and my favorite gratitude journal. Please screenshot your review before you hit submit and send it to me via Facebook at Truman Charities or Instagram at Jamie underscore Truman Charities. Now, let me introduce you to my guest that I'm very excited to talk to. She is the executive director of Christopher's Haven, Joyce Stabal. How are you, Joyce? Hi, very good. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Oh, I'm so excited to hear all about your organization, all the great things that you're doing up in Boston. So for our listeners that don't know much about your organization, can you tell us what is Christopher's Haven and what is your mission? Well, Christopher's Haven, we're, this year we're celebrating our 20th year. And uh, we provide, ha- well, we started out just providing housing for children and their families while they're going through treatment for cancer. And it has developed over the years because we saw, of course, there was a need for the housing. But uh, I think an even bigger need was uh, a need for the support for these families. When they come in from another country or another city and they're all alone in a new big city and uh, going through the probably the most devastating thing of their entire lives and they're all alone. And we realized that probably our bigger mission was to just to be their family while they're in Boston, to show them the support and the family and the connection that uh, they need to get through this horrible thing. So we provide fun things. We want the kids and the siblings and the parents to laugh a lot and have a good time. But then we have a common area called the loft, which is where we have a lot of our parties and birthday parties and holiday celebrations and arts and crafts and puppet shows and on and on. And, but it's also a place where, you know, in the quiet of the evening, they can get together and talk and laugh and cry and just. Right. Be more part of a community. Yeah. And even a family, they all say that the Christopher's Haven family, because they get very, very close. A lot of them still vacation together are still very, very close. It's something that when you, it is nothing like, bonding over your child having cancer and getting treatment. I mean, it's just uh, an amazing bond. And we have people, staff in the loft that are just remarkable, that make that happen. Now, Joyce, I'm curious, what drew you to become um, part of this organization and become their executive director? Well, I started out, uh, somebody came and asked me, a friend of mine that had cancer uh, saw the need. He'd spent a lot of time in, in the hospitals and saw these kids getting treatment and uh, the families had no place to stay. They were sleeping on the floor. They were sleeping in the hospital lobbies. Uh, some of them were sleeping in their cars because mm-hmm. um, they just didn't have, you know, a young family could hardly afford a hotel room for two months. But they, you know, if, it, if you tell somebody that your daughter or son needs this treatment to save their lives, you're going to get there no matter what it takes. So he just asked us if we would help him, my husband and I. And uh, we said yes. And so I, we helped get the charity started and it needed to have a change in the executive director and the board. And we sort of did a redo and uh, they asked me if I would help out. I said, uh, I'll help out for a little while. And that was 10 years ago. So <laughs> that's a great story. I love that. Now, I'm wondering if, if you're a parent in need, what is the process to work with you guys? To work with Christopher Haven. Mm-hmm. Um, well, sometimes you know, they're always in touch with the social worker at the hospital. Okay. And they'll say, you know, where do we stay? Can you help us out? And they'll give us a call or they'll, you know, give them our name. And then a lot of times lately, because we've had almost 500 families come through, they'll just get, it'll be a word of mouth. It'll be a re- referral that some people find us online. But for the most part, it's a contact through the hospitals. 
Oh, okay. And I want to kind of circle back a little bit because you had mentioned the loft. And I know that you guys do all kinds of wonderful activities, not only for the children, but that are undergoing treatment, but for their siblings and family members as other family members as well. So can you get a little bit more detail into some of the fun activities for the children and families? Yeah, I, it varies. I mean, we'll have a birthday party if there's a child that's there that has their birthday. You know, we, of course, don't want to let that go. We had, a, we had a little girl turn 13 once, and she was just so depressed that she couldn't be with her friends, you can imagine a 13 year old girl. Mm-hmm. So we went out and found all these other 13 year old girls. Anybody we knew that had a 13 year old girl, we invited them to the party and they did karaoke and we had cake and you know, all the things that a 13 year old girl would like. And she said it was the best birthday she'd ever had. Oh, wow. So that's the kind of thing, one of the kinds of things that we do. But we also do things we have, I mean, the ages of our kids can range from three months old up to in their 20s. So we'll have arts and crafts. For the kids, we've got some great people that come in and do arts and crafts. We've got, we've had puppeteers, we've had magicians, and we've had, well, we've had Chris Evans. He comes in, oh, wow. and uh, that's always a exciting, very exciting. I bet. Well, they, we tell the kids that Captain America is going to come in, and they look at the wait for some guy to come in in a costume, and then when Chris walks in, they just you know. Actually, kids get very excited, but the mothers just about pass out. So uh, <laughs> it's, it's fun. I love that. Yeah. Is there an activity that seems to be a favorite for the children? Ooh, that's a hard one. Um, <laughs> I guess it is hard because they range from all different ages. They do. And Katie's our family service manager, Katie McWilliams. She is great about, you know, finding things for everybody to do. You know, the kids, of course, love the arts and crafts. That's always a hit. And uh, we'll have people come in and they bake cookies together or, uh, you know, we actually have, (laughs) Katie does her research and we'll find out, sometimes we'll find out some kids that love balloons Mm -hmm. and they'll come back and they'll open up the door to the loft and it'll be filled wall to wall with balloons. Oh my God. Kind of swim through these balloons. I have the best pictures of these kids swimming through these balloons Oh, wow. And, um, you know, so we, it's almost like there isn't one, right. that, you know, I can pick. It's you can't pick one. I did hear a little bit that you guys work with pet therapy for kids. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Because I'm so interested in that. Well, you know, we found that uh, the kids actually miss their pets almost more than they miss their friends and families. <laughs> and when they see a dog come in that can, you know, we'll sit with them and they can pet and and love and it just is so meaningful to them. And so about seven years ago, my dog had died a couple of years before that and my husband was traveling and I wanted to get a dog, but I thought, oh, I can't get a dog, I'm working too much. And then it dawned on me, I could get a dog and bring it into Christopher's Haven. Right. So I got a little dog and she came in, just the kids just loved it. And sometimes the parents would just come in and ask if they could take the dog for a walk. They would all go out and buy little toys and treats for her. And, you know, I just thought it just, you know, a pet is a real special bond. It really is. And especially when you're special for the kids and the family, too, when they're missing their pet at home. Yeah. And when you're sick, there's nothing like a dog. My dog, after a while, got really got a kind of a sixth sense about her. And she could tell when a child was really sick. Mm -hmm. And she would pick that child out and go up and curl up with her on the couch and or in their bed, we'd let them go into the apartments and the mothers would come down and say, could Rue come down and visit for a little bit? And Rue would come down and hop up on the bed with oh. the child. And, you know, pets, yes, I mean, so pets are healing for anybody. Right. You know, right. whether you're sick or not. I'm so happy to hear that you guys have brought that into your organization because pets make everyone just so happy. So that is fantastic. Now, I think other like, as I am. And I think the listeners are interested to know, how do you guys fundraise? (laughs) Any way we can. I mean, it's, you know, especially this last year through COVID, it's been quite a challenge. You know, we have one event. We used to have a fashion show every year with kids. And it would be the kids of uh, some of the Red Sox players and Patriots and the Bruins. And it was really fun. Wow. And then, you know. And the kids would be in this? Oh, yeah. All the kids would be. The kids, some of the Christopher Haven Alumni would be in it, and the kids of these athletes would be oh, in how it. How fun! Well, then they got jealous, and all the athletes started asking if they could walk 
And, and it was hysterical to see these big guys out there. We had to scramble around to find clothes for them. Walking down the runway with their little girls in tutus. So it was, it was adorable. Mm-hmm. So that was always fun. But then COVID hit. Right. We, so had, to, you pivot? we had to really redirect. So the, our event is always in May. And, you know, so last May was, we were pretty new to COVID and pretty new to everything. So we had a virtual fundraiser. We called it a youtube thon And uh, it was very amateurish because who knew what to do. Right. Um, we were really lucky that our, our PR firm, DPA Communications, was there to, with our backs. If we didn't have them, I don't know. It would have been pretty silly. But this year, since everybody's gotten a little more COVID and virtual savvy, we're having, we actually have a fantastic production company that is going to put on a virtual dinner party for us. Oh, okay. And I'm actually really excited about it. It's going to be fantastic. You know, it'll be a dinner party and depending on your level of donation, you can be, you know, on this party and it's going to be hosted by Lenny Clark. Now, is this the 20th virtual yeah. hour that we're talking about? So this, this is your 20th year anniversary. So this is huge. It's huge. It's our 20-year anniversary on May 20th. Wow. And, uh, it'll be hosted by Lenny Clark, who's a comedian who's just hysterical and outrageous, and we can't wait for him to pick on everybody. Mm-hmm. And uh, the cameras will be in all the, you know, the different homes that are having these dinner parties and you know, jump house to house. And uh, you can also get a ticket to be on the Zoom that we have that's going to be you know, one of the ways of participating. You, so you can still purchase tickets for the 20th anniversary gala, correct? Definitely, you definitely can. And it's going to be live streamed on Facebook and uh, YouTube. And so you can just watch it. And okay. one of the advantages too, if you, if you can't buy a ticket to watching it, is that we have an unbelievable silent auction. Um, now, can you tell me a little bit, say that I purchase a ticket for your virtual gala. Can you kind of tell me how the event will go? So what do I do? I okay, well, you, what happens? Well, you can buy a ticket. And like I said, it depends on your level of, of sponsorship. Mm-hmm. on how much you'll be involved actually in the show. Okay. But you, you can definitely watch it and watch the whole, you know, the participation by different people. And you can purchase a ticket on our website and um, just can see. Can you tell me a raffle item that people seem to be really excited about for this 20th anniversary gala? Oh, we've got some good ones. We've, okay. got, some vac- we've got some vacations, some beautiful homes that have been donated in Maine and the Cape. And we've got some dinner packages, you know, dinners for six at some of these, you know, some great restaurants in Boston. I don't have my list right here with me, which I'm ashamed of myself, but I, uh, I was very excited about some of these things. We have Chris Evans has donated. You can get some things from him. I can't even say what it is because it's a surprise. Oh, good. Yeah. He always comes through for us, but you know, different tickets to some of, uh, Lenny Clark is the comedian. His comedy shows and a dinner and oh, fantastic! Now, if I'm looking to purchase a ticket, where do I go? Christophershaven.org. Okay, and you just purchase right on there. Easy. Yep. Everything right on there. Now, and- unfortunately, if I can't attend the gala, how can I still help? How can I still donate? Well, if you want to go on to our website, the silent auction will be presented for the whole week before. Oh, great! The event, so you can go on and see if there's something that you want to bid on. And then you can still be a part of it without having to be there. Fantastic. And you can see all the great things that we have in the auction. And we'll have a whole week of of preview for that. And then it will be available. You can watch the whole thing later through Facebook and YouTube. And um, of course, there's uh, never a problem with just donating. Right. Now, are you guys looking for volunteers at all? And if so, in what capacity? Well, we're always looking for volunteers. Some of the great, well, of course, fundraising is our greatest volunteer. You know, we have a lot of people that will do little fundraisers. But we also, one of the things that has been so important to Christopher's Haven is somebody that will come in and cook a dinner in the loft, which is our common area for the families. And that brings the families in together. Uh, We're just beginning to open it up to that because a lot of people are vaccinated and so we can start to open that up because we were the only Hospitality has to stay open through COVID in Boston. Oh, wow. Yeah. Uh, we have individual apartments for everybody. 
mm-hmm. which is very unusual. The hospitality homes are it's usually like one room with a one caregiver, one child, the rest of the family can't come. And so we have individual apartments, so they could quarantine in the apartments and we would just have all of our activities through Zoom and stuff. But it's, uh, you know, our website's very active and uh, Facebook is very active. So oh, good. And it, well, yeah. I'm interested to know, is there something that you have learned from these children that has surprised you through the years that you've worked with? Oh, gosh. With Haven? Where can I start? I mean... <laughs> It's not even just the kids. It's what I've, some of the biggest lessons are the parents. And uh, I don't know how they get through it because, you know, some kids are, appear, they're all sick, but a lot of, some kids appear to be sicker than others. And what they have to go through, just what I have learned is to be grateful for everything I have in my life. I don't complain as much as I used to, <laughs> my husband tells me, because, you know, I don't have anything to complain about. Mm -hmm. And the spirit, you know, a really good thing that I know is that you can help people, you can uplift people's spirits, and they can get through things a lot easier. If you let people just uh, alone, and thinking too much about what's going on with them, and, you know, feeling badly, it really can affect them makes a huge difference to find people that might be a little having some struggles and lift their spirits. And that joy that you give people, it just makes the whole world a difference. And uh, that's probably my biggest lesson, that and not complaining. I, get, actually get, <laughs> I actually get annoyed at some people that complain, you know, oh, I can't find the right lamp to go in my living room and I don't know what I'm going to do about it. And I just bite my tongue. <laughs> you know, everything perspective. Oh, yeah. You're lucky to have that as a worry, you know. So they've taught me so much. I, I feel... Uh, I've been doing this a long time and every day I'm just so grateful to have been involved and to have had these experiences and to, it's been a, you know, everybody says, oh, thank you for what you do. And I might back at you. I thank you for giving me the chance to do this because it's uh, made a huge yes. difference in my life. Now I want, uh, there's going to be a lot of listeners that aren't in the Boston area. So how can they help? You know, we are also in Atlanta. Okay. We just, we just opened up in Atlanta. Which oh, is such a, how exciting. Oh, it's huge. We're right across the street from the Emory Proton Center. And it's been really fun down here, opening it up and, you know, two very different cultures and, but, you know, very same need. Right. So they can help. We have wish lists on our website. Okay, great. So, you know, we are always in need of things, especially linens, you know, sheets and towels. We go through them like crazy. And those are things that people wouldn't think about. So I'm glad that you're mentioning it. You guys have it on your on your site. Yeah. And sometimes like in Atlanta, I have to update the wish list. We don't necessarily need this in Boston because we're so lucky. We get have so many generous people that will donate toys and stuff. But, you know, all brand new in Atlanta. And when I put it, when you put up things on these wish lists, like, you know, you need a can opener or, you know, a vacuum cleaner. Everybody, that's not real exciting to buy. But when you put up on the wish list that you need toys, you know, you just get this flood. So looking at our wish list, I mean, in Boston, we have 10 apartments. Nine of them are for the families and one of them is our loft. And so you can only imagine what we go through right. for, in those apartments. And, you know, whenever there's a need, like when we run out of uh, shower curtains or we need some cookware, Katie will put it up on the website. And so if, there's that, if you think, you know, you've got a spare 10 bucks, go and look at the wish list and maybe you can help out. Oh, perfect. Now, Joyce, thank you so much for taking the time to speak with us. And I just want you to tell all the listeners one more time your website and then any social media handles so they can follow you. Sure. Our website is christophershaven.org. Our Twitter is Chris underscore Haven. The Facebook is Christopher's Haven. Perfect. And uh, yeah, you can find us if you go on our website, all of it is right there. All of it's there. So yeah. very easy to find you guys and follow you. Yeah, we make it very easy. And, it, you know, there's a lot of nice, especially on our Facebook page, there's some great stories, you know, about the families. Because I, like I said, we've had almost 500 families through. You can imagine, I have almost 500 stories. Wow. They're fascinating. But we try and get them up on our Facebook page and share them with you. And it's, you know, they're pretty fun to do. I love that. 
Oh, well, Joyce, thank you so much again for taking the time to speak with us. And thank you to all the listeners for tuning in to another episode of A Community of Caring. Until next time. If you would like to learn more about our organization, please follow us on Facebook at Truman Charities or Instagram at Jamie underscore Truman Charities or check out our website, trumancharities.com. I hope you enjoyed listening and hearing stories of selflessness and caring. Thank you so much. And I will see you next time.